close my eyes, your face is in my head. I pretend to hear your breathing in the water rattled pipes. No blanket made can keep me warm. This is one of those nights. And there are nights when sleep comes easy. Wish that time was froze. Like in the nights you hold me, and tonight ain't one of those. And there are nights I lie awake in bed, and not a thing feels right. Nights without you. And tonight is one of those nights. And tonight is one of those nights. The moonlight makes me lonely. By lighting places you're not at. I pretend you're moving toward me every time I hear the cat. And some nights when I can't call you, even though I say I might. More alone when you say goodbye, and tonight is one of those nights. And there are nights when sleep comes easy, and you wish that time was froze. Like in the nights you hold. Without you, are the ones I dread, and tonight is one of those nights. And tonight is one of those nights. I prefer the sun to darkness. In the day, there's more to do. As long as I'm distracted, my mind can't be on you. It's an easy kind of living. What happens in the light? There are times that need forgiving, and tonight is one of those nights. And there are nights when sleep comes easy, and you wish that time was frozen, like in the nights you hold. Without you, are the ones I dread, and tonight is one of those nights. And tonight is one of those nights. The country lies between us. I'm all alone in bed. And every time I close my eyes, your face is in my head. The country lies between us. Time I close my eyes, your face is in my head. The country lies between us. I'm all alone in bed. Every time I close my eyes, your face is in my head. The country lies between us. I'm all alone in bed. Every time I close my eyes, your face is in my head. My noble father, I do perceive here a divided duty, 
To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. You are the Lord of Duty. I am hitherto your daughter. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father, so much I challenge that I may profess, do to the more, my lord. I have never met Paula Cole. I Now, other studies about ethnic identity said that people who deny that race has any effect on their lives are less happy and have more poor health than people who acknowledge the effects of race. So I thought maybe this would apply to interracial daters too. So um, my hypothesis was that more racial discrimination that a couple perceives, the less happy the relationship will be unless they discuss it with each other. So. All of my participants were in interracial relationships for at least one year. Most of them were female. Um, I had 23 participants who identified as European American, seven who identified as Asian American and Pacific Islander, seven who identified as African American and Black, and seven who identified as multiracial. One participant identified as Latino, and that was the only one. So Latinos and uh, Native Americans were underrepresented in this study. Hi. <laughs> um, um, I'm having ice cream. Ha. Oh, where is it? Dear, can you see? Can you see? Can you see? Dear, mm, ice cream. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. My boyfriend of three years is a white guy. Yes, and 
we live in Britain. I mean, I've lived in Britain for a donkey's years now, about eight years. And we have never had a problem. Oh, that's a lie. We've had a problem once. It was about two, two years ago, two and a half years ago. We were having a burger just before a gig. Um, and some black guy, funny enough, she's literally bursting through the door and started shouting at me. Me saying stuff like, why are you sleeping with a white man? You're selling out, blah, blah, blah. I was just shocked. I was like, what? Dude, I don't know you. Mind your own damn business. That was the only time we ever had a problem. All our friends are fine with it. I mean, uh, imagine a friend of mine coming over and saying, oh, um, you and, um, you know, it's not really... Um, <laughs> the back hand that's gonna come that way swear to god it's not gonna be pretty what i found was that the more racial discrimination a couple perceived the more secure they were in their relationship that was the only correlation in the entire study racial discrimination didn't lower relationship quality at all and communication had no effects at all so this study went against everything that all the other literature said and i'm not really sure why um, the best argument that I could make and could think of was one from personal experience that when you go through um, discrimination with someone and you decide to stick together instead of quitting because it's hard, you become, I guess, closer. Brought back oh. and 
theorizes about the Portuguese penchant for analingus because it is there and it can. All in the spirit of the age of discovery. Ah, Eros. Desdemona is a Freudian Greek word with no strings attached. Self-preservation. As long as there is money and currency, we can stay in our fantasy, our civilized fantasy. Far away from an old wooden porch where I used to sit my spirit and eat watermelon. Spit out the black seeds onto dry, barren, hard, pale earth. It is the cause. It is the cause. My soul. Let let me not name it to you, you chaste stars. It is the cause. Shed of blood, nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow, and smooth as monumental alabaster, yet she must die, else she'll betray more men. Put out the light, and then put out the 
light. Oh no, actually you don't decide to be with them. You know, you just happen to be with them. Love doesn't, you don't choose love, love chooses you. So, I, I don't understand why people would have a problem with you falling in love with someone else. It's just, or with someone, anyone. I just don't, it's just a foreign concept to me. I mean, maybe because here in Britain we didn't have no civil rights movement. And I don't know. I mean, I've got a job and at work I've never, not once, ever felt like if I was being, like I was being discriminated or ostracized in any way, never. Because I'm black. I've never felt, or oh, maybe once, my very second job ever. Yes, the manager was a bit of a. Uh, C U N T, <laughs> um, but you know you just brush it off. What was the big deal if they have a problem with the color skin? It's because they're jealous. Heck, that's how I see it. Now last night me and Jay we were watching um, Black in America, CNN documentary because a lot of people have been talking about it, and I decided to you know check it out. And I was watching, and he started watching it with me. And we've always wanted to travel. I've always wanted to go to America just to visit. Obviously, I've always wanted to go to the States just to just to see if it's as beautiful as they say it is. Um, but now we're coming to the point where we're like, oh, hmm, maybe not, because I don't want to spend my money to get on a plane, travel nine hours to get to a place where people are going to start giving me shit because my boyfriend is white. Well, I gotta go. This was Kinte cast number three, Otello, the Moor of Benice. It starts with some magnetic tape recordings I made in college uh, at uh, UCSB uh, circa 1987 with my second serious girlfriend, uh, Sandra Esparza. Uh, and her roommate, uh, the flute player that you heard, Tasha. I'm sorry, I don't remember her last name. Uh, and she's really cool. Uh, next comes a track from Steve Connell's Intimate Nature of Knife Fights. Uh, I call this track Country Lies Between Us. And the excellent vocals uh, sets the tone for reaching the character of Desdemona in this show. Um... I apologize for not knowing who this vocalist is and any accusations of this thing we might call reverse racism is a gross misrepresentation. You can purchase this Steve Connell work from steveconnell.com. That's uh, two L's, two N's too. So we get to my favorite Juilliard graduate, Sandra Quarterman playing Desdemona. She's in a sound space I designed using audio from a Spanish museum, La Casa Incendida, uh, in vernissage TV footage from Heinrich Schmidt and his dedicated team. Check out the 2009 quick interview of vernissage TV, celebrating their 1,000th video uh, at WeMakeMoneyNotArt.com. That's uh, we make money not art dot com hyphens in between all the words, right? So then we jump into my spoken word piece from many years ago called Girlfriend is Paula Cole. Um, that should be found at rosx dot megafunk dot com and kentespace dot com. Uh, YouTube dot com personality psychedia. That's uh, P S Y C H. E D E A. Uh, she speaks next in effects of racial discrimination on interracial couples, uh, and she is followed by another YouTube.com lovely lady, Chalky Me, uh, with interracial relationships and ignorance. My spoken word soundtracks return with "Girlfriend Is Paula Cole." Part two, which leads into my attempt to play a few lines as Otello. The sound components used in this scene come from Kit Watkins, uh, his Ambient Realms collection uh, for Sony Creative Software. Uh, by the way, 
I auditioned for Othello way back in my freshman days at uh, UCSB and broke out into an uncontrollable laughing fit. Uh, obviously, I didn't get the part. This is Roz X at KenteSpace.com. <laughs>